Hey guys, welcome back to HD Arachnids. I'm Dave. We got my wife Helen behind the camera. Hi guys. And we're going to talk to you today about substrate. Now I know if you guys read the forums on Facebook or any of the like arachno boards or anything like that, one of the most commonly asked questions is what should I use for substrate for my tarantula? Now there's no straightforward answer to that. There's no exact recipe that's right for everybody and you know there's about as many recipes out there as there are tarantula keepers to be, to be honest with you. Um, there's plenty of other videos out there on this, you know, I, I really advise you guys to check those other videos out and make your own decisions, but we're going to go through and show you how we make our substrate and what works well for us and why it works well. And uh, I want to talk a little bit about what we're going to need to make that substrate first. So here we've got Echo Earth. This is pretty common stuff. You get it at all the pet shops. Um, you get a brick of like three of them, I think. What is it, like nine bucks or something like that? Eight forty nine. Yeah, it's, it's relatively cheap stuff, and you just have to hydrate it with some water. It's really easy to do. And then next we've got some vermiculite, and we add that in, and what that does is it helps a little bit with the, the drainage and uh, moisture retention, and it also, it's a really light, light product, so it makes your substrate a little bit lighter because you don't have so much heavy, bulky stuff in there. And anybody that's had to pick up a 10 or a 20-gallon aquarium full of substrate for a fossorial nose, that they do get pretty heavy, so this helps a little bit with the weight. And then right here we've got just straight up potting soil. This is organic, certified organic potting soil. Um, you can use whatever brand you want, whatever you find. We've got this one at our local garden shop and this one's worked really well for us. So we kind of stick with this one, it's available. And then we also have peat moss. Now normally I buy a much smaller package of peat moss. You don't have to get this big giant one. This thing is like 20 bucks and I'm sure it's gonna last us a couple of years at least. But uh, this is all they had available because it's kind of the off season right now and I had to pick up some new stuff because we're gonna be doing some rehousings. And, I just figured I may as well get that and save a couple bucks buying the big one and then uh, we'll have it for a long time. And what we're going to do first is we're going to take this stuff and we're going to hydrate it. And I'll probably do a little time lapse video and you guys can see the stuff, you know, when you put the water in, it's pretty crazy. These things will literally probably almost get about six to seven times their, their volume once they, uh, they rehydrate. So we're going to cut to the next scene here in a minute and I'll show you guys how we're going to do that. All right, so step one here for what we do is we're going to rehydrate our coconut fiber, and that's real simple. We got three bricks, we got three gallons of water, and then we got a big tote here that we always have on hand. It's usually full of substrate, but like I said, this is time to make some more. So we're going to go ahead and place the bricks in there, and then I'm going to rehydrate that, and I'll give you guys a little time lapse of that stuff puffing up, and then we'll move on to the next step. So now we got our cocoa fiber rehydrated. Uh, you can see right in there, I just kind of stirred it up. Did that little time lapse thing, I thought it'd be kind of neat to see. And next we're gonna add our potting soil. And we do about a one-to-one -one ratio of cocoa fiber and potting soil. And it works out actually just perfect. The one cubic foot bag of potting soil is about the same amount of cocoa fiber once it's rehydrated. So we're gonna dump all this in here. Now those little white things that you see in there, they're nothing to worry about, it's just uh, perlite. All that does is help out the aeration and it makes the, uh, it makes a little bit lighter. So we got that in there and then we're going to add about half of our bag of vermiculite. This is an eight quart bag and we want about four quarts of uh, the vermiculite. So we're just going to kind of eyeball half a bag of that, just like so. There we go. Like I said, you can pick up the vermiculite, the potting soil, and peat moss at any garden shop, and then the uh, the cocoa fiber. Almost every pet shop or Amazon has those. And then the peat moss. This stuff's usually pretty dry and dusty, and we're going to put in about 
four quarts worth, or about the same amount as we did with the Vicky Light for making light of this. And just add this in here. And like I said, you can see that this thing is going to end up lasting us probably a good couple years at least. But it was way, way cheaper to buy this big bag though too. I think it ended up being like this big bag was only a third more than the, uh, the smaller bag, which is much less than half this size. All right. So uh, I think that looks about right. What do you think, babe? Sure. Maybe a little more? Probably a little more. It seemed like you got too much in. And this stuff's really dry, and the cocoa fiber ends up, after you rehydrate, up being pretty wet to where you can almost squeeze a little bit of water out of it, which is not what you want. But the, uh, the vermiculite and the peat moss kind of offset that, and once the, the mixture sits for a little bit, it'll all kind of mix together, and the moisture will go into the drier parts with the peat moss and everything. All right, so we got that done. And now you just got to get your hands dirty and mix it up. So we just get in there and we dig. And you gotta make sure you dig all the way down to the bottom to get the corners. And I kinda just try to scoop my hands way underneath everything and pull up and then it sorta does the mixing thing. You can see it's a little bit dusty, but once the cocoa fiber, since it's really moist, mix in with everything else, the, the dust will settle down. This is a good workout too, let me tell you. It's <laughs> If you're not breathing a little bit heavy by the time you're done with this, you're in much, much better shape than I am, that's for sure. And the good thing is it's pretty light and airy, so you can actually dig down in there fairly easy. You don't need a shovel or anything like that. And then you always want to just make sure you go along the edges, pull out that coconut fiber that's still down in there in the bottom. All right, and you can kind of see, you know, every once in a while you'll find a chunk or whatever, just try to break those up. The same thing with the coconut fiber, sometimes a little chunk won't rehydrate properly. You just break it up and you'll be good to go there. And every once in a while with the potting soil, you find little sticks and stuff like that. I just take them out. It doesn't really cause any harm or anything like that. I just don't like them being in there. Oh, oh, this is a workout. But the good thing is we won't have to do this again for probably a good four or five months. All right, we're all mixed up. You guys can kind of see what it looks like if you want to zoom in on that a little bit. And you can see the, the, the vermiculite and everything mixed throughout there and you get a nice, nice color. It holds its shape real well, but you can't squeeze any water out of it. That's about what you want. All right, so we're done with that part. All right, guys, well, that's the, uh, the process we go through to make our substrate. As you can see, we got the finished product sitting right here. Um, it's nice. It's got a real nice color to it. I like the way it looks, especially with the vermiculite in there. It gives it a little bit of you know, nicer look. It's, uh, it's not real super thick or heavy. It uh, holds its shape, but yet there's not so much moisture in there that you can squeeze it out of there, and that's kind of what you're looking for. Um, we find this substrate works well for all of our tarantulas. There's, we use this for every single one we have, whether they're moisture dependent or dry. Um, it holds moisture really well. It'll also hold the burrow really well. I've never seen any evidence of the burrow you know, collapsing or anything like that. And uh, you can kind of use it to control your moisture. You know, like you want to do, you want the, the bottom part to be a little bit more moist and the top part to be a little bit drier so the tarantula can burrow down and find its own humidity level. In this. This stuff holds the moisture real well and it keeps that humidity up. We're in a state where during the summer it only gets maybe like 50-60% humidity most of the time and then in the winter it's, it's bone dry so this helps us a lot uh, with keeping that humidity up and not having to worry about checking it every couple days. Uh, like I said that this is not the exact recipe that you guys need to use. There's a lot of other great videos out there you know Tons of Big Spiders, Tarantula Collective, Tarantula Haven. They all have videos on this. They all have their own recipes and I advise you guys to check out those videos and uh, you know make your own decision. You don't want to just Oh, this is the way it's got to be because that's what HD Arachnid said. You want to find what's going to work for you. You might have to do a little trial and error, and depending on your climate and how things work, you know, you might not be able to use this, and the one that one of the other channels, you know, recommends might be a little bit better for you. But uh, that's a decision that you guys got to make for yourself. Uh, we're going to be doing some rehousing videos here in the next uh, 
probably might do a couple today in the next few days so be on the lookout for those if you guys like our content please hit the subscribe button hit the notifications bell so you get notified anytime we upload and we appreciate it we're up to 60 subscribers now and that's it's growing a little bit faster than i thought it was going to grow and that's because of you guys and uh, we just want to say thanks and we'll see you guys next week